Welcome to the Madison Miller Podcast. Today is Wednesday, December 16, 2020. Today I'm going to recap yesterday's college basketball games and look ahead to today's games. Same for the NBA preseason. NFL power rankings, a big-time NBA extension by a star player that I want to get to. The latest with the NHL. The mass Singer finale tonight, so we'll preview and predict who wins and who's under the remaining three masks, and my best bet of the day. All right, we'll start with college basketball. Busy slate last night. We'll go over the results and look ahead to today's games. Stony Brook over Point Park, 83-39. St. Bonaventure over Akron, 81-74. Tennessee Martin over Bethel, Tennessee, 96 or 95-60. Rice over Houston Baptist, 90-79. Illinois State over Chicago State, 91-62. Northwestern over Quincy, 148. Stanford over Cal State, Northridge, 82-71. St. Francis Brooklyn over Central Connecticut State, 91-86. Buffalo over Miami of Ohio, 90-62. Georgia Southern over Carver, 92-27. Radford over Longwood, 62-53. Wofford over Coastal Carolina, 88-77. Virginia Tech over number 24 Clemson, 66-60. So I was... Correct in terms of someone knew something there. Number 10, Tennessee over Appalachian State, 79-38. Number 13, Illinois over Minnesota, 92-65. So best bet cashes in again. Best bet's been on fire lately. New Mexico over Our Lady, 104-65. East Tennessee State over Gardner-Webb, 65-60. Hofstra over Monmouth, 96-88. Auburn over Texas Southern, 80-63. Wichita State over Tulsa, 69-65. Louisiana over New Orleans, 73-63. Charlotte over Davidson, 63-52. Liberty over SC State, 82-52. Stetson over FAU, 78-69. UNC Greensboro over South Carolina, Upstate, 65-57. VMI over CU Harrodsburg, 106-72. VCU over Western Carolina, 93-68. Utah over Utah Valley, 75-67. Evansville over Southeast Missouri State, 66-63 in overtime. Texas A&M over Southeast Louisiana, 69-52. McNeese over Arlington Baptist, 114-50. Louisiana Tech over Jackson State, 85-58. Number 12, Wisconsin over Loyola Chicago, 77-63. Murray State over Transylvania, 90-49. Portland over College of Idaho, 88-74. North Texas over Arkansas Pine Bluff, 81-56. Lipscomb over Trevecca, 61-45. Oral Roberts over Bacone College, 96-65. Southern Miss over Lamar, 66-63. Texas State over A&M Corpus Christi, 51-46. St. Louis over Indiana State, 78-59. Number 15, Florida State over Georgia Tech, 74-61. Florida A&M over Austin P, 76-70. Santa Clara over Fresno Pacific, 88-65. Alabama over Furman, 83-80. Kansas State over Iowa State, 74-65. And St. Mary's over Eastern Washington, 80-75. All right. A less busier slate tonight. A lot of postponements and cancellations, by the way. SIU Edwardsville, Northern Illinois canceled 12 o'clock. You have UMass against LaSalle. My projection for this Atlantic 10 showdown is UMass by 25 Meanwhile, according to FanDuel, UMass is laying three and a half. So I'm a whole point off. I'm going to go with the total here and take, hmm, this is tough, the under, 140 and a half at minus 110. Um, I just don't think either of these teams are any good. One point off on the, on the game, then I go with the total. 1 o'clock, SEC Network, Richmond at Vanderbilt. I project Richmond by 18.5. To only give it 6.5, I'm going to lay to 6.5 with Richmond against Vanderbilt, even though the juice is heavy at minus 115. Northeastern against Syracuse. My projection is Syracuse 11. Syracuse is giving 17.5. I'm taking Northeastern plus the 17.5 at a very valuable Minus 104, that's a 3 o'clock game. 4 o'clock, Wagner-Bryant, so some NEC 
action on this Wednesday. We're supposed to get a lot of snow here in the Northeast. Um, Wagner, I project as a seven and a half point favorite, and Bryant is laying eleven and a half, which is nuts. I am gonna take Wagner plus the eleven and a half at minus one eighteen heavy juice, and I like them straight up at plus five sixty. Um, getting Wagner at over to five to one is pretty good. I don't get it. I don't get that line at all, and I think the wrong team's favored. So give me Wagner at plus one eleven and a half at a very juicy price of minus one eighteen. I like them straight up to a plus five sixty. St. Francis, Brooklyn, Central Connecticut State. I project um, this line to be um, hmm. I don't see it here on my board. Oh, there it is. Um, St. Francis, Brooklyn, eleven and a half. Meanwhile, St. Francis, Brooklyn's laying. Only four and a half. So I'm going to lay the four and a half for St. Francis Brooklyn on the road at a very valuable minus 104. Long Island against Sacred Heart. My projection for this game is LIU by 15 and a half. Meanwhile, they're only laying two and a half. I'm going to lay the two and a half with LIU at a very juicy minus 115. Fairly Dickinson, St. Francis, Pennsylvania postponed. Five o'clock UTSA against Oregon State. I project. The Beavers by 25 and a half. Meanwhile, the Beavers are giving eight and a half. I'm going to lay the eight and a half with Oregon State against UTSA at a very valuable minus 104. Pac-12 Network, Omaha, Colorado. My projection for this game is Colorado 11. Colorado is giving 21 and a half. So I'm going to take Omaha plus the 21 and a half at minus 114. Next up, you got Pitt at Miami. So some ACC action. That's a, the start of the 6 o'clock window. And my projection for this game is Miami by 13 and a half. You know, Miami is giving or getting one and a half. That, how is Pitt favored? Or is this... Yesterday's version of uh, Clemson and Virginia Tech. Like, this is worse. Like, come on. Pitt lost a bye game already this year. Give me Miami plus one half at minus 104. And give me plus 114 straight up for the Canes as well. Ridiculous. William & Mary against Hampton. I project William & Mary by eight and a half. And... They're giving three and a half. I'm going to lay the three and a half at William and Mary against Hampton. My fear here is that a, the possible letdown spot after the George Washington victory. Mercer and Georgia State. My projection is Georgia State six, and the line is Georgia State five and a half. I'm going to go to the total one fifty two and a half, and I'm going to take the over at minus one hundred eight. Toledo against Marshall. My projection is Marshall by a half, and it's Marshall by six and a half. I'm going to take Toledo plus a six and a half. I don't know if they'll win the game straight up. I don't think so, but they are plus 240 to win the game straight up. San Diego, Cal Poly, my projection for this game is San Diego by 13. They're only laying five and a half, so give me San Diego minus a five and a half against Cal Poly at a juiced minus 115. Morgan State, Navy, canceled. Now on the 7 o'clock window. Fox Sports 1. Butler against number 7, Villanova. My projection is Nova by 14. And Nova is fair by 12 and a half. I'm going to lay the 12 and a half at Villanova at a very short, valuable minus 108. Big 10 Network, number 20, Ohio State against Purdue. My projection is Ohio State by 7 and a half. And Ohio State is... A four and a half point underdog to Purdue, which is crazy. Give me Ohio State plus the four and a half at minus one eighteen. I like them to win straight up to a plus one sixty. Carver Liberty, we could skip. 
ESPN2, South Florida, Cincinnati, so some AAC matchup. I'm taking, or I'm sorry, my projection, Cincinnati 8. And Cincinnati is laying 8.5. 1, is the total, and I am going to take the over at a juice, minus 114. Flagger, South Alabama, we can skip. Florida International, Florida Gulf Coast. My projection is Gulf Coast by four. And Gulf Coast is a one half point underdog. I'm going to take that at minus 112. And they're plus 102 to win the game straight up. Central Arkansas, Mississippi State on the SEC Network. My projection is Mississippi State by two and a half. And they're laying 16 and a half. I'm going to take Central Arkansas plus a 16 and a half at minus 108. They're 14 to 1 the win straight up, which is a little nuts, too. I don't think they're going to win straight up, but I just think it's crazy that they're 14 to 1. Pac 12 Network, Cal Baptist, Arizona. My projection is Arizona by 25 and a half, and they're giving 20 and a half. I'm going to lay the 20 and a half with Arizona against Cal Baptist. Grambling and UL Monroe is next. My projection in this game is Grambling 11, and it, you know Monroe's favored by 7.5. I'm going to take Grambling plus 7.5, and they're plus 280 to win the game straight up. So give me Grambling plus 7.5, and, and then plus 280 to win straight up. UNC Asheville against Chattanooga is next. My projection for this game is Asheville by a half. Meanwhile, Asheville is a five and a half point underdog, and I'm going to take that at minus 105, and they're plus 215 to win the game straight up. ESPN TCU Oklahoma State, I project Cowboys by five, or I'm sorry, five and a half, and that's what the line is. Totals 134 and a half. Ooh, this is a tough one. Kate Cunningham's awesome. So that's why the over is tempting. Let me go under 134.5 at a minus 114 juice. Sanford and Troy. My projection is Sanford by 7. They're only giving 1.5. So I'm going to lay the 1.5 with Sanford at minus 105. NC State, number 23, Louisville postponed. Drake, South Dakota postponed. Bama a and North Alabama canceled. Coppice State, George Mason canceled. Pacific, Cal State, Northridge postponed. North Florida, Florida postponed. 7.30, Tennessee Tech against Jacksonville State. My projection is Jacksonville State by 6.5. Meanwhile, that's what the line is, and the total is 131.5. I love the over at minus 112. I think that's ridiculous that an OVC game's in the low 130s. So give me over 134.5 at a slightly juiced minus 112. Kennesaw State Belmont. My projection is Belmont 34.5. Meanwhile, Belmont's laying 24.5 and I'm related 24.5 at a juiced minus 114. Southern UAB. My projection is UAB 6. They're laying 15.5. So I'm taking Southern plus the 15.5 at a juiced minus 114. Arkansas State, Stephen F. Austin canceled. 8 o'clock, Sam Houston State against number 11, Texas on the Longhorn Network. My projection is Texas 25. And Texas is giving 27 and a half. So I'm going to take Sam Houston State getting the points at a valuable minus 108. East Carolina against SMU. My projection is SMU by 23 and a half. You know, they're only laying 12 and a half, so I'm going to lay the 12 and a half at SMU at minus 102. Concordia, California, and Pepperdine, we can skip. Northern Colorado and Denver, my projection is Northern Colorado 14. They're laying 7 and a half, so I'm going to lay the 7 and a half with Northern Colorado against Denver, and, it, and it's a valuable minus 106. Harden Simmons, Abilene Christian, we could skip. 8 o'clock CBS Sports Network, Ole Miss, Middle Tennessee. My projection is Ole Miss by 21. 
and they're laying 12 and a half, so I'm going to lay the 12 and a half with Ole Miss against Middle Tennessee. Number 17, Virginia Wake Forest postponed. Eastern Michigan Valparaiso canceled. Still Ross Tarleton postponed. 9 o'clock, ESPN, number 21, Duke against Notre Dame. My projection is Duke 18. We know Duke's only length three and a half, and I'm going to lay to three and a half with Duke against Notre Dame. This will be a letdown spot for Notre Dame after their big win against Kentucky at Rupp Arena. So I think this is letdown potential. So give me Duke minus three and a half at a juice minus 115 against Notre Dame. UTEP, Arizona State. My projection is Arizona State by 33 and a half. Meanwhile, it is. 13 and a half and the later 13 and a half with Arizona State against UTEP. Memphis against Tulane on ESPN2. My projection is Memphis 22 and a half. Meanwhile, they're only laying nine and a half. I'm going to lay to nine and a half with Memphis at a very juiced minus 120. New Orleans LSU. My projection is LSU 30. Meanwhile, um, 25 and a half is the number. I'm going to lay the 25 and a half at a slightly juiced minus 112. And last but not least, Montana Washington at 11 o'clock on the Pac-12 Network. Washington, I project as a six-point favorite. They're laying seven and a half. So I'm going to take Montana plus a seven and a half at a juiced minus 115. So a lot of intriguing options for best bet. Now I'm going to go over the NBA preseason game results from yesterday and look ahead to tonight's slate of preseason games. There was only three games on last night. One really good preseason game that was actually entertaining, which we'll get to last. 76ers over to the Celtics, 108-99. Um, Shake Milton had 19. Jeff Teague had 18. Rockets over to Spurs, 112-98. The Rockets... James Harden played. John Wall had 15. Harden had 12. And meanwhile, for the Spurs, Lonnie Walker at 17. Kings over to Warriors, 114, 113 on a buzzer beater three by Kyle Guy, who was one of the big heroes for Virginia in the national championship game. And Kyle Guy at 20 to lead the way for Sacramento. And Stephen Curry looked like the Stephen Curry of old. He had 29 points and four assists. Only four games tonight. Cavaliers-Knicks at 730 from Madison Square Garden. So you got two bad young rebuilding teams going at it. 8 o'clock Bulls-Thunder. So you got two more rebuilding teams. So Billy Donovan back in Oklahoma City. That's interesting. But that's only the preseason edition of that. 9 o'clock, Trailblazers Nuggets, so Western Conference contender or borderline contender matchup there. And then NBA TV, the Lakers and the Suns. So you got LeBron James and Anthony Davis playing tonight against Chris Paul and the Suns. So that is an interesting preseason game there. Now I'm going to do my NFL power rankings for the week. I'm going to go from... 32 to 1. I made some dramatic changes from the last one to this one. Maybe it's a lot of overreactions about how teams did. 32 to the New York Jets. They're going to be 32 as long as they're winless. Sam Darnold's been so up and down, especially down. And as I mentioned last week, they're probably going to be drafting a new quarterback in the draft next year as Sam Darnold will probably be on another team. 31, the Jacksonville Jaguars. They're obviously clearly trying to lose, although they finally brought back Gardner Minshew last week. And it's unfortunate. Gardner Minshew, sixth-round pick, had some flashes, and then obviously um, he looked like shit today. So, um, Or I'm sorry, on Sunday. And he's starting again against the, um, their next opponent. So um, it's going to be interesting to see how he looks these last couple weeks. Maybe he's a possible trade bait, too. Number 30, the Cincinnati Bengals. Um, 
they're in the bottom three for the rest of the season because of no Joe Burrow. That team is just lost without him. And they're going to get their butts kicked in all likelihood on Monday night next week. Number 29, the Los Angeles Chargers. A nice win for them against the Falcons, but I still can't get that Patriots pathetic performance out from under my head and how bad Justin Herbert was in that game. Justin Herbert single-handedly ruined his chances at Rookie of the Year by being shut out against the worst Patriots team in a long time. Number 29, the New York Football Giants. They're back in the bottom five after being out of the bottom ten, and that's solely because of how bad they were on Sunday against the Cardinals. Daniel Jones was terrible coming off the injury. They should have never played him. He was not healthy. And there's a chance that the organization cost themselves a division title by playing Daniel Jones, who clearly was still injured. And he looked like the Daniel Jones from earlier in the season before they went on that little rally. And regardless, they are probably going to consider taking a quarterback in the draft because I don't think Dave Gettleman's going to be their general manager next year. 27. The Carolina Panthers, um, the Panthers, to me, um, are just not that good. Um, Christian McCaffrey hasn't been healthy the whole year. Um, He was one of the big reasons why that I believe that running backs matter. Him and Derrick Henry, obviously, but he's been hurt the whole year. That contract suddenly isn't looking as good as it did once they gave it to him. Number 26, the Houston Texans. Um, what a debacle of a performance against the, the Bears and Mitch Trubisky. They should have been lower. But the reason why they're not in the bottom five is because their quarterback is still Deshaun Watson. And Deshaun Watson, as far as I'm concerned, is still good. They lost that game because their offensive line stinks and they don't have Will Fuller and their defense stinks. And Romeo Cornell's their coach. 25, the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys actually looked pretty competent this past week. And that's maybe Andy Dalton playing to the narrative of him back in Cincinnati. And Cincinnati didn't have Joe Burrow. So I understand that was a narrative kind of win for Dallas. They have the 49ers coming up, which is a very winnable game for them. So if any, if there's any big winner from... The weekend, it's the other three NFC East teams because of how bad the Giants were on Sunday. Especially Washington, who we'll get to. Number 24, the San Francisco 49ers. Speaking of the 49ers, um, they just had a terrible performance against Washington. It was the Alex Smith revenge game. And then he gets injured, and Dwayne Haskins is in, and he... Had one nice little drive, but he's just not good. Him and Daniel Jones really have failed to live up to expectations this year. And even from where they were drafted, obviously Jones, everyone knew that was a reach at the time. And um, Haskins, to me, has just been a huge, huge, huge disappointment. Probably one of the more disappointing young quarterbacks I've seen in a long time, considering where he went to school. But it looked like he was just a product of the school rather than really this special quarterback that I thought he was. But we'll talk. I'm I'm talking about Washington right now, which I shouldn't be. This is supposed to be the 49ers segment. So, yeah, they have a winnable game on Sunday against the Cowboys. Um, So we'll see what happens. 23, Atlanta Falcons. Um, The Falcons are pretty decent at times. And then yet again, they falconed on Sunday against a team that tends to do it their own way, and that's the Chargers. And they were without Julio Jones, which was a problem. And at times, their offense had looked competent with uh, with Julio Jones in there. 22, the Detroit Lions. Um, the Lions, to me, are a feast or famine team. Darrell Bavel's now their... Uh, intern head coach, um, they're just terrible, and I think there's a chance they get slaughtered this upcoming weekend. 22, the Chicago Bears. Um, the Bears have been very 
solid offensively these last two weeks. Their defense just choked against the Lions for whatever reason. And then Trubisky um, just lost it against the Lions as well, like there at the end. Because that was just a team collapse. And that was a good way to bounce back from that. I'm impressed with the Bears. So, um, yeah, they have a kind of a long shot to make the playoffs. Although Arizona will get to them right of the ship a little bit. Um, number 20, the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, they have uh, something cooking with uh, Jalen Hurts. Um, they look much more competent with him than with Wentz. Um, their defense looks very good. Granted, it was Taysom Hill, not Drew Brees. So they have a tough task coming up against Kyler Murray and the Cardinals. Number... 19, the Denver Broncos. Um, that was an impressive win at um, Carolina. Drew Locke played really well. Number 18, the New England Patriots. Um, they had that bad loss against the Rams. They probably should be lower than this. Number 17, Washington. Um, we talked about them a little bit. They're, I know we talked about Haskins a minute ago. Chase Young, man. He's a generational talent. Probably the best thing Washington did last year was purposely lose that game against the Giants because Chase Young is a generational talent. Say if Washington wins that game and the Giants have that pick and take Chase Young, then the Giants are probably in the playoffs and not Washington at the moment, regardless of the quarterback situation. Because I don't think it matters for the quarterback situations with Washington and the Giants. Well, it does, but at the same time, it doesn't. Because Chase Young is going to be one of the best defensive players in the league for a long time. Number 16, the Minnesota Vikings. Um, They probably should have covered against the Bucs. Their kicker single-handedly murdered them in that game. Number 15, the Las Vegas Raiders. Um... The Raiders got a big one coming up against the Chargers in primetime on Thursday, which we'll preview and pick on the podcast, but they're in trouble. Number 14, the Arizona Cardinals. A good right the ship win at the Giants. They're playing Philly coming up, and they're under some pressure here to follow up the Giants win with the win here. And it would be so Eagles of them if Kyler Murray was running wild on them and they beat them like 35 to 10 and Jalen Hurts is terrible but I could see a scenario where this game's close and the Eagles pull another rabbit out of their hat 13 the Miami Dolphins um the Dolphins to me um have quietly been impressive um I don't do moral victories on the podcast but they have to be encouraged with Tua and what they saw against the Chiefs. And that defense is lights out. They picked off the best quarterback in football three times. That's pretty impressive if you ask me, even though they lost the game. 12, the Baltimore Ravens. What they did on Monday night was something magical. Lamar Jackson gets hurt. He comes back and leads the Ravens to that game-winning drive. Which was as impressive as impressive can get. Justin Tur- uh, Justin Tucker for 54 yards after the announcers jinxed him against the Cowboys. And then it was just incredible. They played one incredible football game on Monday night that featured a bad beat at the end with that safety. Number 11, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Um, I wasn't all that impressed with them. On Sunday against the Vikings, I think that Dan Bailey is the reason why they covered, as I mentioned. But that was a much-needed win for Tom Brady, Bruce Arians, and the Buccaneers. Number 10, the Tennessee Titans. That was a much-needed bounce-back win over the Jaguars on Sunday. And they have another potential blowout coming up against the Lions. Number 9, the Los Angeles Rams. Um... The Rams had an impressive win against New England, led by the great Aaron Donald. 
And now they play the Jets coming up. Number eight, the Cleveland Browns. That was a heartbreaking loss for the Browns. And they have a golden bounce back opportunity coming up on Sunday night against Daniel Jones, who's not healthy right now, and the Giants. And a Giant team that's all of a sudden looking vulnerable after four straight wins, which were quite aberrational, if you ask me. We'll talk about that another day. Number seven, the New Orleans Saints. They get punished this week after losing the Jalen Hurts and the Eagles. Very disappointed in, in the Saints. They need Drew Brees back if they're serious about winning a Super Bowl. Taysom Hill, I know it's cute, Sean Payton, but it's not cute anymore. The Eagles figured him out. And he stunk on Sunday. Number six, the Indianapolis Colts. Um, the Colts have been impressive. That was a nice win at the Raiders. Number five, the Pittsburgh Steelers. So the Steelers get booted from the two spot to the five spot in the power rankings. Disappointing loss against Buffalo. Their offense really has been garbage these last couple weeks. Ben Roethlisberger's looked old and not healthy. Number four, the Green Bay Packers. Um, They probably should be lower than this, but I'm punishing the Steelers a little bit because, just because of how bad their offense has been. Well, Green Bay looked good on both sides of the ball, even though they gave up some points to the Lions. Number three, the Seattle Seahawks. This is probably an overreaction ranking, considering just who they beat. And there was the Jets. And they probably should be lower because they lost to that terrible Giants team the previous week. But Russell Wilson went out there and kicked ass in what was an important bounce-back spot for the Seahawks. Number two, the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are rocking right now. Their offense is rocking. I don't like their defense that much, but their defense stepped up against the Steelers, which was impressive. But I think it was more about the Steelers' offense not being so good rather than the Bills' defense being lights out. And number one, the Kansas City Chiefs. They're going to be number one until further notice. Patrick Mahomes is the MVP. They're the best team. Um, their defense is kind of vulnerable. I think they can be picked off by the right team. If Pittsburgh's offense finally got back to what it was earlier in the year, maybe. I think the Bills could pick them off. We saw the rest of with Vegas twice. But Vegas lost them the one time, but, the, but they should have won that game, which we talked about on the podcast. I think the Chiefs can be beaten, but they obviously should be the number one team in the power rankings until further notice. A big-time NBA contract extension happened yesterday. Giannis Adetokounmpo announced on Instagram that he will not become a free agent and that he will sign a mass extension with the Milwaukee Bucks. That is a huge win for the Bucks franchise, their best player in franchise history already, quite frankly, has committed to them long-term. And it's a record-breaking extension Five-year, $228 million super max, including an opt-out after the fourth year, which is unbelievable. And I'm very happy for Giannis and that fan base. And um, they went out and traded all those picks for Drew Holiday. They went all in on Giannis, and it paid off already, even though that... Um, they didn't want anything yet, but that was the whole point. The whole point was to keep Giannis happy, and it looks like they've done that. And his announcement came via social media. This is my home. This is my city. I'm blessed to be able to be a part of the Monkey Bucks for the next five years. Let's make these years count. The show goes on. Let's get it. And that is a nice post from Giannis, and he deserves all that money. And I still think that he's going to work hard like he always does. He's not somebody that's going to lay back and quit like a couple other guys I've seen after taking the max contract. But Giannis won't do that. And he knows that his team is still under pressure to win that elusive championship to get on Giannis's resume. Now we'll do some NHL talk, discuss the latest with that. Um, so... We got a tweet from Pierre Lebrun last night, and 
it said that the sides are still communicating um, and it was nonstop all weekend and continued Monday and going back and forth on season protocols, transition rules, and critical dates. The hope is, is that it's done over the next few days to set up a vote on each side by the end of the week. But as we saw in June, these things can drag. So it's going to be very interesting to see when this is announced. I'm going to say it's by Friday, Saturday. And then obviously... We'll get right into the hockey business like we have with the NBA business. And then um, they also said that um, they're layering effects of roster sizes and those talks are going on. The cap is the focus with the roster rules and the quarantine rules are affecting the teams. And... The U.S. teams are looking at having fans. And Batman is getting help from Dr. Anthony Fauci. Um, so it's going to be very interesting to see what goes down. And then we'll start talking hockey on the podcast again. And I'm looking forward to it for sure. Now I'm going to preview and predict tonight's Masked Singer finale, a two-hour show. The first hour is going to be a season recap, obviously, where they show whom got unmasked earlier in the season and some of the best performances of the year. So the show's on for two hours, eight to nine. So And then the Road to the Finals episodes from eight to nine. And it is the look back at the best performances from season four. And in the second hour is the grand finale. You got Mushroom, you got Sun, and you got Crocodile. And those three contestants are all very super talented. And... In the holiday special, um, The Sun performed Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree by Brenda Lee. And in the re-aired performance was her first week performance of Cause I Love You by Lizzo. And her special hint was that she disguised her voice the first week. Crocodile performed Silent Night by Boys to Men. And then the re-aired performance I showed was Bleeding Love by Liana Lewis. And his special hint is that he has a tie to the turtle, a.k.a. Jesse McCartney. And then Mushroom performed the Christmas song by Nat King Cole. And then his second song was, um, was the re-airing of This Woman's Work by Maxwell. In terms of my guesses right now, um... This is going to be very hard. And, and right now, I'm going to predict how the results are going to go. Third place, I think, will be the crocodile. And I think under the crocodile mask will be A.J. McLean of the Backstreet Boys. Um, this sounds like somebody that's in a boy band. Um, to me, the hint that gave it away was that hint that He's been on film with Craig Robinson, and obviously they're in that movie together. And so um, that's what makes me think A.J. McLean. Second place, I think, will be The Mushroom. And I personally think that this is a major star, and I'm going to go with Usher. I think the vocals are similar. He's very good at that high-pitched level like he did with this woman's work. And his performance to Valerie was one of the best of the season as well. And I think the winner is going to be Sun. I think it's a slam dunk that Sun will win. She's the best contestant they've ever had. 
And I'd be surprised if this is somebody that is not a special performer. And as of right now, I'm going to go with a ridiculous, crazy guess of one Lady Gaga. I think the voice throw-off was huge, like she said. And when she performed Rockin' Around the Christmas Tree last week in the Holiday Edition, and two weeks ago when she performed the ballad that she sang with um, the song um, by Billie Eilish, When the Party's Over. It sounded a lot like her with the low-pitched voice, and she's very good at that as well. And I think she's perhaps the most talented singer on the planet, Lady Gaga. And, I mean, it could be Christina Aguilera. That won't shock me. I was guessing Christina Aguilera for the longest time. Some of the judges have guessed Carrie Underwood in the past for her, Catherine McPhee. And I'm a little suspicious because Catherine McPhee performed on I Could See Your Voice last week. I don't know if that means anything. We'll find out tonight. But And she was a popular pick for The Sun. And Cat McPhee's a good singer. It's just that she hasn't been around in a long time. And by the way, if there were hints towards the Rottweiler, then obviously I would be on the Catherine McPhee bandwagon. But the voice to me sounds like Lady Gaga or Christina Aguilera, but I'm going to go with Gaga for now. Although that sounds obviously like a Homer pick in a lot of different ways. And in terms of the judges' guesses for the um, uh, the Mushroom, Jaden Smith, Leslie Odom Jr., Jordan Fisher, Ken Jung went with Usher. He could be right there. Frank Ocean, um, Adam Lambert, which I doubt, that was a bad guess, Donald Glover, which wouldn't be bad, Willow Smith was thrown out, but I think this is a male, um, so, um, like I said, I'm interested to see who these contestants are. And then obviously the last one. And um, the crocodile. Um, A.J. McLean was the guest thrown out by Craig Robinson. I thought A.J. McLean, the week he performed Toxic by Britney Spears. Because of some of the vocals. I mean, it could be... Jay-Z Chazé, it could be Donnie Wahlberg. If it's Donnie Wahlberg, I think it's going to be a historic moment in Mass Singer history because obviously, um, which I think it is. It is a, I'm going to, I shouldn't even say I think it is. I know it will be a historic moment in Mass Singer history because that's Jenny McCarthy's husband. So that would be the first time a significant other, other of a judge or a host would be on the show. And then you could just picture Jenny McCarthy losing her mind, running on stage and kissing her man. And that's what I think would happen if Donnie Wahlberg was ever on the show. And, it, and you never know, it could happen tonight. He could be the crocodile. And I thought he was the crocodile, but I'm going to go with A.J. McLean. It could be Kevin Richardson or Brian Luttrell. Um, maybe um, Joey McIntyre. Um, so you never know. But yeah, my final three guesses... And the one I feel the best about is Crocodile with A.J. McLean, who I think will be in third. Second place, Mushroom, I'm going to go with Usher. And then the winner, the Lion, I'm going to go with a ridiculous guess, the Lady Gaga. My guess is they're probably going to change throughout tonight's episode. And I'll um, reveal what my final, final guesses were for those three contestants on tomorrow's podcast. Last but not least, my best bet of the day, brought to you by FanDuel. I have some interesting options for um, tonight's um, pick. Um, there's a lot of them under consideration. But 
Today's pick is going to be, hmm, this is a good one, um, God, I want to lay three and a half with Duke against Notre Dame, but that, Notre Dame might actually be good, so that's the case against that. Hmm. I don't like this pick very much because I am not a fan of this team necessarily. But it's more the number. I am going to go with Oregon State minus 8.5 against UTSA. That's a 5 o'clock game. And it's a valuable minus 104. So I'm going to lay... The eight and a half with Oregon State against UTSA, although I don't feel good about it. So that's it for the show today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping everything from college basketball, NBA preseason. We'll preview Thursday night football between the Raiders and the Chargers. NBA shooting guard rankings I'll do tomorrow. I just haven't had time for it today. Because we had to talk about the Giannis extension, Mass Singer finale, and everything like that. So we'll do shooting guard rankings tomorrow, small forwards Friday, power forwards Monday, centers Tuesday, and then we'll do the uh, top 100 players um, maybe on Wednesday's podcast, even though we'd have games played already by Tuesday. So I hope you guys have a great day, everybody.